Hi, welcome to the Fit and Healthy Today show. And for the next couple of months, we're going to be addressing issues on youthing, if there is such a word, and basically how we can age gracefully or not age at all as time progresses chronologically. And the subject matter I picked today is something very basic. And as we go along with these aging lectures or youthing lectures, um, we'll get more into detail as to what causes aging, how we reverse it, and how to feel better and stronger and younger, both physically and mentally. Um, today our topic matter is age spots. And they're defined as these uh, flat little small brown spots, and you'll see it on the hands or on the face. Oftentimes they're called liver spots. And they appear most commonly on the face, neck, and hands. The areas that generally, as a rule, have the most sun. Because sun, as noted here, is one of the causes or contributing factors towards aging or age spots. Now, I had tons of sun when I was a kid and tanning beds with all the bodybuilding shows and everything I've done. I have no age spots. And um, you ask why? Well, I think I can give you an explanation as to why. Because when we look at all the causes, ah, let's take a peek. Um, basically, it's the buildup of various waste products known as lipofusin, and it's a byproduct, basically, of free radical damage on the skin cells. So that means that the cells are full of waste products, and that's in the inside as well as showing on the outside so what that means is that includes the liver, the brain cells, the kidney cells, all the cells in your body. If you're having age spots and liver spots, have this waste product accumulation. So the contributing factor towards this, a poor diet, number one, and the lack of nutrients that go along with the quality of the food that we have in today's world. Lack of exercise, the inability or lack of willingness to move. Most people want to be lazy, fill themselves full of fast foods, and then expect that they're going to look great all the rest of their lives. And then they look down at their bellies when they're age 30 or 40, and they go, whoa, we lost it. You know, we got a big belly here. Um, smoking, use of drugs and alcohol all age you tremendously. So anybody who says, yeah, I drank in my earlier days, but I gave it up when I was 40, oh boy. Um, there's some major detoxification and reversal that has to be done in order to get rid of all the waste byproducts of all those years of accumulation of drugs and alcohol, poor diet, lack of exercise, and stress. When we add in particularly the following nutrients are deficient in people who have age spots. Vitamin E, selenium, glutathione, which obviously most of the time has to do with the vitamin C deficiency and the lack of greens, the lack of the liver's ability to take a certain um, nutrients as well as amino acids and convert them into glutathione, which is the strongest antioxidant known to man. Chromium and DMAE. And I know most people go, chromium, that's for blood sugars. Well, eating a lot of sugar and sugars is, will age you tremendously quick. If you ever look at most diabetics, they age in the inside and the out much, much quicker than an average person who is not a diabetic. Sugars burn you out. They burn the cells. Um, we also now have another factor that is a major contributing or contribution to uh, these age spots within more recent times in the last hundred years, and that includes all the chemicals in our food, environmental pollutants, over 3,000 chemicals that are added to our food and our cosmetics, and bottom line, they're causing RNA, DNA, cellular repair to become defective. And as a result, then, you get those spots. 
And basically, your liver, your brain, and the rest of your cells in your body, they disintegrate with, pine, with time, and you age. And you age not gracefully and not in a pretty fashion. When we look at starting with the diet, if you have age spots, boy, warning, 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 based upon what all we have, that you're going to have cellular breakdown and you're going to have chronic illness somewhere, somehow, very, very soon. So as a result of that, and I don't want to hear, oh, this is just because I was in the sun a lot of years. If that's the case, you didn't have the lack of protection in your nutrients and everything else that go along with it that could have prevented that damage, like me. Ah, the sunbather, like indeed, I have none. But here we go. If you've got them, this is the diet that you need to proceed with. Eliminate all animal proteins for at least one month. I'm talking cheese, eggs, milk, meat, gone out of the diet for an entire month, only using plant-based proteins like beans, sprouts, um, uh, you know, we got hemp and rice and vegetable sources of protein shakes, um, tofu, any um, plant-based types of protein are not going to contribute to this. You're going to eat a diet that's at least 50% raw fruits and vegetables. That means uncooked stuff and needs to be organic, the optimal word. Because why, when you're trying to detoxify all these chemicals and waste products, would you want to add on to it more chemicals? Whenever you are toxic, clinging the liver is also necessary. So there are various liver cleanses on the market. I know uh, my husband and I have them at our stores. But diet-wise, celery beets, carrots, dandelion greens, greens, uh, a little bit of lemon water. These are all cleansing agents that you can utilize in your detoxification process for your youthing. Drink three quarts of water or herbal teas per day. I normally, they say, drink two quarts of water over and above what you normally get in. Most people, you're lucky if they drink one quart over and above their normal food intake. Avoid all caffeine, alcohol, saturated fats, and sugar. No more of the super monster kind of drinks because those are loaded full of caffeines. Your coffee, a little bit of green tea is okay. Not too worried about that. The catagens in green tea neutralize the effects of the caffeine. But any other of the junk, it's gone. Once again, we're trying to use the skin. Follow this regimen. It'll work. Now, when you look at the supplements out there and the treatments that are available for this youthing of the skin and getting rid of age spots, it is recommended that you wash with olive oil soap, and that should say, or black soap. These are uh, emollient-rich types of soap that cleanse the skin without drying the skin. It doesn't pull the essential fatty acids out of the skin. Rinse off with a little bit of diluted lemon water. Changes the pH. We want to alkali, but it also can help lighten some of the um, little spots. And just like a teaspoon probably of lemon uh, juice, organic, once again, to probably about a 32 ounce bottle of water and you're going to rinse off your face. Now, the medical options, and these sound pretty, don't they? Uh, Retin-A skin or alpha hydroxy acid treatments, they're topical. Uh, some are prescription and some you can get over the counter that help fade these spots away. Um, you can also have them freeze or burn off by your doctor. And I would say that would probably be the last resort. They also have an acid that they can apply to fade these away and it burns, literally burns the skin. And you know, I don't know long term wise. The, uh, whether or not you'll see the spots be gone forever because if your lifestyle continues, there's going to be more that comes anyway. So um, if you've changed lifestyle, you're doing different things, that's something maybe that can be considered. But if you're not changing anything, nah. Supplements for age spots. 
a good multiple, high in antioxidants and B vitamins, which are very, very, very important for skin and tissue repair along with your minerals and zinc. My very favorite, and I don't normally mention brands, but in this case, this is the number one ranked in the country because it has all the things in there that I came across that would cover this. And there's one by Source, Na uh, Source Naturals. It's called Life Force Multiple. It's a two a day. Don't normally mention brands. In this particular case, there's nothing that compares. Um, it has the necessary antioxidants and all the Bs, the A's, the necessary ingredients as a multivitamin. In addition, uh, at least 1,000 milligrams three times a day of ester C. It's needed for the collagen matrix and skin tissue repair. Very strong antioxidant and free radical scavenger for the skin tissues for these age, um, for these age spots. Probiotics, good bacterias and enzymes can aid the digestion. If you're eating 50% raw foods, we're gonna have some pretty enzyme rich types of foods, but adding those good bacteria also improves your immune system and the absorption of those nutrients. Mixed to cough or all, I've got all kinds of spelling errors here. Um, vitamin E, 100 or 400 IUs fights cellular aging, literally fights cellular aging because it oxygenates so well. It also improves circulation to the skin tissues. Vitamin D3, very necessary for repair since we're all avoiding the sun now. We're very, most of us, over 90% of us, to the according to the National Institute of Health, are vitamin D deficient nowadays in the United States. And if you've got olive, uh, Hispanic, or black American skin, oh boy, we take a lot more, uh, we need a lot more vitamin D because it's harder for us to convert short-term exposure, sun exposure, and convert that into the adequate amounts of vitamin D we need. So between 2,000 and 4,000 IUs are necessary. Grape seed extract prevents further spots. What more needs to be said? 100 milligrams twice a day. It's a very strong antioxidant for the circulatory system as well. Sod, enterocoded, reduces age spots. It's one of the um, strongest um, antioxidants or um, youthing ingredients I can list for you. Inacetylcysteine, sustained release, aids and abeds in combination with C, your body's ability to convert um, these substances into glutathione, which neutralizes all the toxins uh, in the lever and makes them inert so they don't cause further cellular harm. Omega-369s, now we like nut sources in the diet, but obviously most people aren't going to get that. So you, in order to have proper um, membrane repair, you have to have adequate amounts of fatty acids. So oftentimes supplementing with these omega-369s is very helpful. Um, detox teas, including milk thistle, dandelion, burdock, red clover, uh, you know, blood purifiers, liver cleansers, um, to help the liver repair, especially if the liver enzymes are out of whack. These types of, of herbal remedies can be very helpful for liver cleansing as well, too. Um, something I didn't um, write down on here that I want to address as well, and we'll probably address makeup and that in another show, but use moisturizers, right, moisturizers that have the fewest ingredients in them. You know, shark liver oil, shea butter, something that has hardly any ingredients in it, jojoba oil clean, organic, and pure. Instead of looking for things in which you look at the moisturizer and you've got 50 ingredients and you're wondering, okay, what chemistry lab am I putting on my skin now? That is what you're putting on your skin, is a chemistry lab. And no matter how anti-aging they say, most of them are full of chemicals that literally will age and damage the skin. There is a topical application um, for um, what are called emu oil. And it comes from the animal's emu, and that literally can help soften and lighten as well age spots and is an excellent uh, anti-wrinkle and good moisturizer as well. That's it in a nutshell. We'll be going through the next, like I said, few months uh, working on the youthing process and aiding and abetting you. 
I give the diet on this a shot, and if you have any questions, you can always contact Ralph and me at the vitamin and herb stores in uh, Lompoc, Bealton, Napomo, and Orcutt. Next, we're going to be moving on to the fitness portion of our show. Thank you. Hi, welcome to the fitness portion of our show. And today I'm going to show you a little bit of a yoga pressure point acupuncture type of move that can help whenever you feel fearful or anxious. And I know this seems a little bit like voodoo medicine, but really seriously it works and it's been used for thousands of years. What you do initially is you grab on and in reflexology on the bottom of the foot, we have right here on the ball of the foot an area that's a kidney pressure point. And what you're going to do is you're going to kind of rub those kidney pressure points right there on the foot and rub them real good. And then the legs extend outward. And what we do then is we have meridian lines that are energy flows. And like I said, this is a thousands of years old, so bear with me. What you're going to do is you're going to run your hands underneath the center point line. And this is a, called a kidney bladder flow. I'm a yoga instructor, so this is something that we do whenever I have people that have grief or who are fearful. And so you rub on those areas, and then you hold it together, and just be uh, quiet and silent, kind of calming yourself. And then tapping along the kidney bladder meridians, and just bear with me, this works, and you may feel like a little bit of water flow, okay? And then when you're done with that, your energy from your hands, you put your hands on the back of the kidneys. And what that does is that moves along fear out of the body from the liver um, bladder flow. And you may notice as well for a few days, you may start to pee a little bit, and hopefully then that will relieve some of the, any fear or grief that you may be sustaining in your life. Next, we're going to be moving on to the research portion of our show. Thank you. Hey, welcome to the research portion of our show, and with us today is Ralph Tertiano. I appreciate the intro. All right, now you often hear cool hands, warm heart. Well, there's another thing to cool hands now you may be quite interested in. Well, cool hands, skinny body. The American Heart Association, uh, and also printed in the Prevention, Nutrition, Physical Activity, and Metabolism of 2012 Scientific Sessions report, did an experiment. They took a few people, actually about 24, and they used the word obese, but I'm getting tired of the word obese, let's just say overweight. And they gave a control group and an experimental group a cool cylinder to hold. Well, the experimental group got the cool cylinder at 60.9 degrees Fahrenheit. And the control group just had a cylinder which is at body temperature, 98.6. Now what they did is they asked each group to work out. And this is what they discovered, which is quite interesting. They found out when the group thought they were holding a cold bottle of water, it cooled their palms and then cooled the body internally. Well, this is the results they got on the exercise part. The control group, which is the group that just can held the warm cylinder, which is a body temperature, basically dropped out and quit quite early. The group that was holding the cool cylinder of water, which stayed cool through the entire workout by 45 minutes at 60.9 degrees Fahrenheit, had some interesting results and benefits over the group which is holding the warm bottle. The cool bottle group, they shaved five minutes off a one and a half mile walk time, dropped three inches off their waist, and had a lower resting blood pressure and greater exercise heart rate than the group holding the warm bottle. And that was only after three months. Three inches in three months, just 45 minutes of exercise per day, and I think it was about only about four days per week. Interesting little thing. So next time you're working out and want a little boost on your exercise routine or get a little extra benefit, hold literally a cold 
bottle of water. And that can give you some benefit. Especially, again, they said people that are overweight, they tend to overheat easily during the workout. That causes them to quit early. Well, very simple, very basic, very mechanical, cool hands, cools the body, extends your workout uh, endurance, activity, and ironically, also helps you burn more fat, especially around the waist. All right, now we're talking about fat. There's the fat that we don't want, trans fat. Let's say you have a child hanging around the house every once in a while, three, four, five, six, eight, ten, whatever it is, eats a little bit of more of those Twinkies and Ding Dongs and Pop-Tarts, so to say, and a little bit of those donuts, and you notice the behavior gets a little out of hand. It may not necessarily be the sugar, even though that can most likely be a large contributing factor. Well, they discovered, and this was printed in the Public Library of Science online, that people that consumed more trans fats are also more aggressive, believing that the trans fats that they consume may entice them to be more angry, aggressive, so on and so forth. What they did is they took 945 adults and issued a survey basically with the history of aggression, conflict tactics, self-related impatience, irritability, and basically overt aggression and based it all on a scale. Those that consume the highest trans fat content also had the highest aggressive behavior. Now the question is going to arise, was the aggression causing them to consume more trans fats or was the trans fats causing them to be more aggressive? Well, they said, quote, we found the greater trans fatty acids were significantly associated with greater aggression and were more consistently predictive of aggression and irritability across measures tested than, than the other known aggression predictors that were also assessed, they said. If the association between trans fats and aggressive behavior proves to be casual, meaning there's some sort of solid evidence between one and the other, this further adds the rationale to recommendations to avoid eating trans fats. So, outside of your diet and wanting to feel more relaxed and calm, think about if you have a child that's growing up and basically eating a lot more trans fats and the behavior gets out a little out of control. Nice thing to try maybe every once in a while, look at the trans fats, see how much are in the box or the bottle. A lot of processed foods have lots of trans fats. Pull out of the kid's diet for a little while and see if the behavior improves. Beats going on a drug for aggression. All right, talking about drugs. Now here's one I really don't like. I like to really speak more about vitamins and supplements, but sometimes a lot of these drugs which are commonly used uh, are really dangerous and the news is not reporting on what they do or how bad they are. Well, this one goes under the name of Donazepel, Don Pezel, all right, otherwise commonly known as Aricept, usually given for Alzheimer's. Well, this actually blew the mind of the FDA medical and statistical reviewers, which did not want Aricept to be approved again for Alzheimer's. Why? Because it did improve cognitive symptoms in the basically the manufacturer's light. However, it did not improve overall functioning, which they said suggested the cognitive differences were not meaningful. Furthermore, the new dose caused more side effects including nausea and vomiting. Well, you hear a new dose. Why do you hear a new dose? because the patent ran out on the 10 milligram dose. So what did the company do? They came out with a 23 milligram dose, which means more of something which is absolutely nothing except one thing, more side effects and makes you sicker. They argue that the new dose was approved only over the objections of the FDA's medical and statistical reviewers that it offers, and their, this is their words, not mine, no meaningful added benefit and just more harm. Schwartz and Wolfshin pointed out, and this is printed in the British Medical Journal.com. They pointed out a stunningly erroneous statement in the advertisement aimed at doctors, which claims that the patients on the 23 milligram dose experienced important clinical benefit of both measures, cognition and overall functioning. So what did the manufacturer basically do? I'll say exactly what they won't say. They lied. They basically lied. Your relatives and all the people on Aerocept Basically, they can care less. They said, despite this, the drug was approved over the objections of the FDA's medical and statistical reviewers and government and private insurance programs now have to cover the drug. 
It is now or will soon be under consideration of approval in another 16 other countries, Asia as well as South America. And this is their words. Sadly, the available drugs don't work well. But that's no excuse for manipulating vulnerable patients, desperate family members, and their doctors to use a product that is most likely to cause net harm. So, as you have family, friends, and other people on the drug Aricept, Think about it. You're really not doing them any good. You're doing a lot of harm, but you are helping line the pockets of some very, very wealthy people. Something which is kind of uh, what I would consider criminal. All right. Another criminal action, fake drug sales. All right. This is important because a lot of people are buying the drugs because they're running low on money, so they buy them all over the internet. Understandably because of desperate measures. Well, this was printed in the International Journal of Clinical practice and published in the March edition. They looked at all the drugs manufactured between 2005 and 2010 that were sold over the internet. Well, in their words, again, quote, that a lot of the drugs and medications which are sold over the internet are not the ones that you expect them to be. On top of that, they are basically from unverified sites and contain ingredients such as arsenic, boric acid, leaded road paint, floor and shoe polish, talcum powder, chalk, and brick dust in nickel. They also said that the drugs being sold over the internet are what they call fake, and every fake drug is a potential massacre. How bad is it? Well, of the 62% of the medicines ordered online, 62%, meaning if you order something online, more likely than not, you're going to get something that really sucks and could possibly hurt you, and you'll never know it were substandard or counterfeit. Give you an idea how bad it was. They looked at Viagra and ordered Viagra online. Well, they found out of all the sites selling Viagra, only 14% of the Viagra ordered was actually authentic. So whether you're buying vitamins, drugs, medications, you're buying from a faceless entity which has no emotional or empathetic connection to you. And even worse, no accountability to you. Try and sue them. Try and locate their IP address, basically, or anything along those lines. They hide it for a reason. They hide it because they don't want you to find them when you find out what you've been taking you has actually been hurting you more than helping you. All right, real fast, on the news, you found something about common sleeping pills causing increased death. Well, I want to tell you how it caused increased death. And of only 18 doses per year, you're three and a half times more likely to die. Why? It's because of cancer. They said those taking the highest number of doses are also the greatest risk of developing several types of cancer. It were more like 35% more likely to be diagnosed with cancer of any type. Sleeping pills are kind of scary too. Well, thank you for that. And my time's up. Thank you very much, Ralph. Once again, do your research and join us for our future shows on the wonderful youthing process. Thanks a lot. Bye.